Winspiration, the way to the essential. On UK Health Radio, Winspiration brings wisdom and information for an extraordinary future. Together, we can shape the world we want to live in. So let's get real and create the idea. Be extraordinary. Hello, happy that you're listening again to another episode of Winspiration Radio. Today I have a very special guest. Oh, you know, I always say that it's a special guest, but this is really special also for me. Because um, normally I have guests that have not such a personal contact or a personal history of it. But today we have a guest, um, um, I can call him a friend. And it was really interesting meeting me. I was once sitting in an airplane and they had the air, the magazine from the airline and there was an advertising, I guess, and it was a wonderful pool. Uh, so, oh, I want to be at this pool. And so I checked out where the pool is and it found out it was in the Caribbean and it was on Parrot Key, an island and there was a nice resort. So I flew there, wanted to see the pool. I did this, had few times and I went in the spa and there I met this guy who is with you today and Stephen Harvey and he has an interesting story coming from Scotland uh, and he learned uh, yeah to we'll say work in a laboratory for tea so and, and work for teas went to Canada when changed his life became a massage therapist and more and more developed a lot of, I just call it healing techniques, very spiritual, and he influenced my life a lot. Because on Parakey, of our connection there and our talks, I got so much information and wisdom from him, um, like connection to the Martini I worked later with it, and, and, and so on. So I'm extremely happy to have him today here on the show, and I promise you, Listen and feel this guy. Uh, yeah, he is from somehow from a different planet, but helps people on this planet to have a better life. Steve, I'm so happy that uh, you have the time. You're in Canada. I'm at the moment in South Africa and looking forward. We meet in a week here uh, to work on a project uh, together. And so, how is it in Canada? Cold, totally different than a parakeet, I guess. Um, it's so much different, so much different. Uh, fortunately, right now we're having a bit of a Chinook, which is a phenomenon that only affects you know, the, the area of Calgary, uh, where the warm winds come in. And so uh, the, the temperature right now is, is quite pleasant. Um, it's a balmy minus five degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, a lot different than, than parakeet for sure. Yeah. When, when I met you in, in, in Parrot Key, you were, like I said, you opened um, me up for a lot of views and connections um, about, especially because I come from Germany and, and you had so much more knowledge about uh, speakers or teachers and the English speaking word. But you went a different uh, path when you coming with uh, working with teas, sitting in a laboratory. And then what makes you change this and really go and this kind of more spiritual work? I think it was, you know, just going through um, my own personal journey. Um, I'd gone through a divorce and uh, that sort of put uh, an end to working in the dental field um, simply because, you know, the the guy that my ex well, you know, ended up being with and marrying um, was my boss, um, and so that put a, a real sort of damper on my career as in the dental field. But even before that, I had I'd sort of manifested this separation because I realized that deep down inside, I missed the connection of working with the patient, which I had in Glasgow at the University of Glasgow Dental School. But when I went to Canada, I was working in a laboratory, totally disconnected from the patient and I couldn't put my finger on it what about the job it was that I no longer enjoyed mm -hmm. and so I know that whatever happens in reality first manifests energetically mm -hmm. and so 
looking back on it, I realized that energetically I had already started the separation from that that you know, profession, and I started to look for something different. And uh, and it was my my present and current wife um, Pat who had suggested that I should become a massage therapist because I liked working with my hands and and liked working in the healthcare. And my first comment was, you know, boys from Glasgow don't do that. <laughs> you know, like touchy feely stuff, you know. <laughs> but I, I thought, you know, why not and give it a try? And so I did, and I discovered that I had a gift for it. But um, you know, and and one thing led to the other. I started working with members of the Canadian National Badminton Team. But I started to notice, you know, with high performance athletes, you know, when they got injured, how their whole life seemed to fall apart. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. You know, if you could be injured in the blink of an eye, why couldn't you be, why couldn't you recover in the blink of an eye? Why did it seem to take a long time? Mm -hmm. And so I kept looking for the missing link, you know, what made someone a gold medalist and what made them fall apart. Mm -hmm. And so that caught me, caught me on this path of researching and, and, you know, peak performance coaching and stuff. And and one thing led to another, and I discovered, you know, the work of Ayurveda, um, which was the original mind-body medicine and a deep spiritual uh, connection at that. And so through that journey of self-discovery and then wanting to help, you know, the athletes that I was working with, um, it just led me from one so-called, you know, master expert uh, to another. And... Um, and it's been an incredible journey, you know. I've, I've now lived in twelve countries as a result of that, and uh, you know, I'm, I still, I still, you know, wonder, you know, how did a boy from Glasgow end up here? You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a, uh, it's an incredible journey, and uh, but at the same time, how do we all end up here? You know, that's that's a, uh, you know, the the big question to be answered. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I think it was part of it was by design, and part of it was by default. Mm. There's interesting mentioned uh, the different countries as also um I just uh, in uh, in preparing this uh, show today <laughs> oh, when did we meet last I know this was in Thailand before oh we met in LA yeah oh we met in Salt Lake City uh, where? <laughs> and uh, when you just were talking oh we met once in Germany and I saw there was a guy who couldn't really walk and he worked with him 15 minutes and he, he could walk again a little bit. So it was really fascinating. So you're around the globe and uh, helping people. And I, uh, what <clears throat> maybe that needs to be said also, I guess, um, well, maybe nobody measured it yet, but we are talking here and you're listening to Steve. I think this is a guy who had touched and coached and treated most celebrities on planet Earth. I guess nobody touched more um, what famous names and interesting also that they who have all access to the best, they all think, wow, I'm happy that I met Steve. Um, so I'm happy also just to learn a lot. Like you said, what makes a peak performance? What makes it to heal fast? <clears throat> but that is one part, this with the patients, what you said also love. But we met when you were in charge of setting up a spa. So it was more setting up also the institution and not just only working as a healer. And that's what you did, well, quite a lot, 10, 12 years or what? Correct, yes. You know, I had, um, after I had finished studying Ayurveda at the Chopra Center, um, I developed a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. to do a Shirodara treatment in Ayurveda and um, I started manufacturing them and selling them to spas around the world and that got me, uh, you know, access to then working in the spas to train the staff and set up Ayurvedic programs for the spas and that's what, you know, got me to Parakee. I was there with my wife setting up the Ayurvedic program and then, um, you know, through Again, by default, it seemed uh, I started being asked to set up other spas and manage them, and, um, and that has taken me around the world. But as in addition to setting up the spas and managing the spas, I was all always doing my own healing work as well as a master practitioner in-house 
And so that gave me access to a lot of the, as you mentioned, these uh, celebrity clientels, um, you know, and, um, but again, you know, I, I still pinch myself when I look back at it and I think, how did a boy from Glasgow end up here? Um, you know, and when, you know, like everyone, I was, I was in awe of the first celebrity that I met. But then I quickly realized that as long as I was putting them on a pedestal, I couldn't help them. You know, I had to put them in my heart, you know, and because if I was minimizing myself relative to them, they wouldn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. And so I started to look at, well, who sees me as a celebrity? Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe it was just myself. <laughs> uh, or maybe it was, maybe it was the staff, who knows? But as long as I put them on a pedestal, I couldn't help them. And so when I balanced my perception of what a celebrity is, you know, and mm -hmm. And what I've discovered over the years, um, having worked for many now, is that they're not different than anyone else. You know, we seem to think that they are, but they're not. Uh, you've got the same concerns as everyone else. Um, and so it's like, if I can spot it in them, I've got to find it and own it in myself. Where do I have that same trait? You know, where am I successful? Where have I got my, you know, shit together, so to speak? Mm -hmm. And then at, at the flip side, where do I not have it together? Mm -hmm. And who sees me as a, a you know a, a failure? Mm -hmm. It has to coexist. And I think this is where we get into trouble when we look at celebrity worship. Um, yeah. We're only seeing one side of the coin. We're not seeing the duality that each and every one of them is. You know, they may be a phenomenal actor or musician, but they may be an absolute horrible father or husband at home. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we need to see both sides of it. And it's the same with look when we look at ourselves, it's just a mirror of reflection. Where have I got the same traits and when we can own them? Uh, then I think I'm in a position to be able to help them and assist them. And I certainly can't do that if I'm I'm looking up to them and thinking, you know, they've got something I don't have. Then as human beings, we all sh should understand, yeah, we are all one or the same. Uh, even right. if you're on the outside, uh, might be different, have a different uh, profession or different wealth, different cars. Um, but if we're really uh, aware, everything what we experience is inside. Yeah. So correct. That's the same with them. And um, am I right if we say even we often think, especially when we grow up. Oh, these superstars, but somehow they have a harder life um, because they are on a stage, applauded and everything, and then they go home in the hotel room and totally alone. So this is a, oh, with a difference um, amplitudes we normally don't have to deal with. Yeah, and I remember speaking to, to one um during um uh, during the the pandemic the lockdown and um and he he was saying that to me you know he says i'm so lost i feel i don't know what to do you know i'm i'm so miss being with my my bandmates and i so miss being on the road and in concert in front of the fans because you just thrive on that and without it it's both you know the world it just seems like it collapsed you know yeah, and so yeah, yeah i think to the, I think it's much more um, profound for them um, that are used to that, you know, millions of people adoring them on a daily basis. Uh, you know, we're lucky if we have a few couple people give us a nice compliment in a day. Um, so I think it's there, but to the degree that's there is quite, quite different. Um, so um, it's not a life that I would want. It really isn't, you know. I'd like to be... I'd like to have their wealth, but I would don't like to have their fame. Um, yeah, you know, because again, you know, it's that people feel that they own you. Then, you know, um, whereas if you're anonymous, you can walk down the street, and nobody bothers you. But yeah, a celebrity that is well recognized and and feeling that you have to be on all the time, and you can never have a bad day. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. otherwise it's in the tabloids. You know. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's quite a different life. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I had uh, um, 
part of my past success I was speaking in front of thousands of people so it was normal and then afterwards and if you have those kind of, and, and like you said the up and down if they put you on the pedestal nobody sees you huh? they see their idea and it's yeah. it's so tough and if, if friends so called friends are coming uh -huh. Are they really friends or they just want something of the glamour or the money or whatever? So there comes a big loss. We see it from Whitney Houston or the Roy Williams. So how many people really end up bad because that is not so easy to handle? Yeah. And then, the and that's again, is how do you, who is genuine, who is authentic? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I don't remember speaking to one. One celebrity, and I said, you know, I can't imagine what it's like to walk a mile in your shoes. I'd say where everybody you meet is looking to use you for something. Mm -hmm. Photograph, an autograph, you know, read my script or wear my fashion, my clothes, you know. Can you get my daughter in your movies, whatever. And what she said really stunned me. She turned around and she said, you know, Steve, mm. everybody that you meet is looking to use you as well. Yeah, And I was like, wow, you know, and so when you thought about it, it was true. You know, it's, it's, uh, as Di Martini said, it's a game of life. And once you learn to play the game, then you can master the game. Um, but when you think that people should be different than what they are, you know, that's, it's like thinking a cat should bark, you know? And, um, <laughs> so it was really, it was quite interesting to see that, that yeah, everybody is looking to use somebody, but, and then, what is the story that they're creating in their mind about you? Mm -hmm. Just like, what was the story creating your mind about celebrities? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that when, when the when the celebrity realized that I recognized them as a celebrity, they changed their mm -hmm. whole persona changed. Mm -hmm. And and so then I thought, well, I'm going to have some fun with this. I'm going to pretend I don't know who they are. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And when I pretended I didn't know who they are, they would look at me like, you really you don't know who I am? How long have you been living on this desert island? <laughs> That's a couple of years. Oh, and you really don't know who I am? And I say, of course I know who you are. But then then I got to meet the, the person, the human being, not yeah. the celebrity. Yeah. And, and it was only then, I, as I say, I could help them from heart heart-centered yeah. position versus, you know, putting them on this elevated position. And then they needed to be ready to go out of this identification with this status and just be, you know, otherwise yeah. you can't help them either. Huh? Yeah. That's right. So you met so... And, it, and not that I said that, how refreshing it was to be able to be with someone that they could just be themselves without mm -hmm. having to be the performer. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, which again, I think, must be exhausting um, to be having to be performing all the time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is it, um, that that sounds like uh, yeah, there's this short moment when they meet Steve, they can relax. But I guess there were like everywhere, it must be some celebrities as well. They manage their life very well, uh, so they can play the game. But then be kind of normal, yeah, and relaxed. So, what is your what is a lesson you can give um, as how to do it to really be whatever happens on the outside? How much people put you on a pedestal, but really be with yourself. What is the clue how to do it? I think it's really understanding who you are and what's. What is your hierarchy of values? Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think the people who uh, we perceive as successful are people who have learned uh, um, to live their life according to their hierarchy of values. And if something's important to them, they become extremely disciplined every day mm -hmm. to make that, you know, achieve that goal. And if it's not important to them, they they don't give it any energy. It's X, yeah. next, you know, and so they're not distracted from their goal. And I think, um, you know, that's what 
probably the major difference I've discovered over the years from successful people and people we would say were maybe not so successful is that they, they really are clear on what the hierarchy of values are and then they have an extreme discipline. Now, a lot of people will say, well, it's easy for them to be disciplined because they've got so many people assisting them. You know, they've got nannies and housekeepers and, and drivers and, you know, someone's running to get their dry cleaning and whatever. Yeah, but at the same time, if and I remember again one celebrity saying to me, um, if most people would put the same discipline into their own daily job, the way, you know, an A-list celebrity prepares for a movie role, mm-hmm. the results that they would see would be incredibly different. Yeah. And, you know, we, we look at so many of these celebrities that go on re- very restrictive uh, nutritional programs to lose, you know, a ton of weight or to hit the gym to become so buffed up. You know, I just read about Hugh Jackman getting ready for um, this new movie. They said it's going to take six months of working out to get in shape for that role. Mm -hmm. And you think, what? look at that discipline. Now, if the average person was to say, I'm going to give six months of that same discipline to achieve my goal, the results would be completely different. And I think that's what the difference is, is most people don't have that discipline. Mm -hmm. And the reason they don't have the discipline is because they've not truly identified what it is is really high on their goals, but high on their value system. Yeah, maybe it's uh, two things. First of all, um, I didn't know because in my childhood, when I thought this is important for me, someone told me, no, that's not important for you. We do something different. Um, but also, um, I had a tough time uh, with the word discipline. You know, when my dad said, you need to have more discipline. That was always about doing something what I really don't want to do, or it was not. It was always for the others, um, so it was not for my highest values. And th- there, um, Bob Proctor helped me a lot in just explaining. And later, I learned the roots of discipline comes from the Latin, uh, no, the language of the Latin roots, and it's just more like Jesus had disciples. Yeah, so discipline, it's, it comes from school and learning. And so, ah, um, you, you should learn. Or, like Bob had said, it means give yourself a command and follow. So then you need to, the highest uh, values for you. You need to be clear about that. And then have the, um, yeah, maybe there comes out the third thing. It's not just accepting the uh, my own command. But we all, and that is an interesting question maybe for you, what you experience, there is what they call inner spells or vows we did in childhood or nobody gave us permission. So I even don't dare to do it because not you. You are not allowed to do this or what inner blockages, emotional problems we have. I guess some celebrities maybe had problems and that's why on the other side they were successful. Um, to compensate that, but how how you yeah, and again, um, I think you're, you're hitting on a point there because so many of them have that that it's like a, a common thread that runs through their lives. Mm-hmm. That they if you look at their ch- their early childhood, you know they they came from you know broken homes and 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 were basically told they would never go far in life. Mm. But yet there was something deep within them that that didn't buy into that story. Mm-hmm. You know, and and this is where again a lot of my work has been around helping people to make sense of the story that they're innocently believing in the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh it, it doesn't matter where you've come from, it's where you're going, you know, mm-hmm. and but it's the story that is going to determine if and when you get there. Mm-hmm. You know, and and so it's like to give people that sort of um, a method that they can work with every day, because I'm a great believer that in order to have a problem, you have to be good at it. You have to practice it. Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you've got a problem with drink and alcohol, then you, you're really good at drinking. You really know how to drink and, and you practice it on a daily basis. Just like um, Roger Federer practiced on a daily basis to become the greatest tennis player that's ever lived. And see, so, you know, again, speaking about Bobby's talking about, you know, if you want to look at your results in the future, what are your behaviors today? Mm -hmm. And so, but if you look at people's results and then you take, go back the way and you start to see what was the story that they were innocently believing in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because it, the way I teach is that, that thoughts create a disturbance in the body's energy system, yeah. which then determines how you feel. And it's our feelings that determine our actions, which eventually determine the results we get or don't get. And so, Begin with this, and I didn't know when you said, when you said disturbance, for me that sounds more a little bit like negative, but it doesn't need to be always negative, but it's, it's a relation with the thought and the emotions and what comes in the body. So you could use this also to create something good. Right, right. So it's, so again, you could be feeling terrible, but you have a flip in your mm -hmm. mind that says, you yes. know what? I'm not settling for this. This is not my life. You know, maybe you come from a broken home or wherever and you decide that's not for me. And so you, there's a, f a switch that gets flipped in the mind that, mm -hmm. that shifts that, which then brings the energy system into balance, mm -hmm. which creates more positive feelings, which determines the actions and the results you get. Mm -hmm. But the other fl flip side of the coin is the people who don't do that and they keep having the negative thoughts creating a negative disturbance in the energy system no. determining negative feelings and actions and results you know and so it's it's so important um to be able to make sense of the story that you're innocently believing this is where i am but that's where i want to be now how are you going to get there if the story is saying oh you'll never do that who do you think you are you're a boy from Glasgow, or you came from a you know, working class family or whatever, then if you buy into that story, then you'll never even take the action mm -hmm. to make that change. Mm -hmm. And as, as I say, that's a common thread I saw through a lot of the uh, successful uh, athletes and celebrities is that, yeah, they may have had a, you know, a tough childhood, but there was something inside that says, but that's not me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to go after my goals and I'm going to create a different life. And as Dee Martini says, you know, what you end up as being your voids in your life somehow end up becoming your highest values. And so again, even the voids have got benefits and drawbacks. Yes, yeah. And it just so, helps you like, yeah. Um, like also, that's a stepping stone. Uh, mm. But there's something else or I, I can see in my life. Um, when I, yeah, up on my dad always said, um, yeah, you are not worth anything. Nothing will come out of you. And I very, um, he said, the main thing what I can reach is cleaning streets or whatever. Um, so I believe also with the law office and everything, what I built it, the, um, the, whatever, four stories, uh, office building in Hamburg, best address. It was to prove something. But this is like exactly what you said. Because of that, I created kind of success. But the bad part was I didn't feel good with it. I couldn't be enjoyed. I was not happy. So this didn't help me. So I think the the art is, okay, create the life you really want, but also be happy to a life and don't identify yourself with um, whatever material stuff. Before you answer... Let's make a short break. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. So, welcome back, Steve. So, how to be really happy, especially if you like it, relate to success because of 
the drama and the childhood. And I think when you, when you mentioned that, you, you, you did it to prove, but who we trying to prove it to? Your dad or yourself? You see? Mm-hmm. And I think it, you know, I think we get caught up on trying to prove our worth and we fail to realize that it's our being that's worthy, not our doing. Yeah. Doing will never be enough. Yeah. You know, and so this is what I think we've had it backwards. We kept thinking I need to do in order to be someone. Mm-hmm. When the reality is we need to be in order to do. Mm-hmm. You know, and so the question is then is who am I being right now versus what am I having to do in order to become successful versus seeing yourself as already successful complete, whole, and perfect, exactly the way you are. And from that place, moving forward in completeness, in wholeness, mm-hmm. versus in lack, um, and having to prove something. Because I think that's just a, a trick of the ego, you know, getting caught up on having to prove our worth. Uh, and when you're busy being worthy over here, you're a complete disaster over there. <laughs> you know, and so that's the, the trap. And as you say, you don't feel fulfilled then. Um, you had the, all the trainings of success, but you didn't feel fulfilled. Oh, no. Um, so intellectually, it's it's easy uh, to get. <laughs> um, but uh, just going to life with all of the things like Theoretically, I had the success looking from the outside. The facade, the business card, wow. That was, but I was not really happy there, not really happy. I couldn't enjoy it. And I was at the wrong place. So maybe I proved something for myself or for my dad or whoever we see it. But I did something, but it kind of was driving me more than I really wanted to be it. Um, that's why I needed to get rid of everything um, because I'd, even then I was selling my soul yeah, to mm-hmm. prove the other thing. And how do, do you really uh, connect then or find what is really, really good for, let's say, the soul? When are you really aligned mm, and can live the flow and or conscious creation, or we call it. You know, I think you, you hear people talking about when you're in that zone, how time stands still, that uh, you absolutely do what you love, you know. And I was just talking with a client last night about it, and uh, she's a hairdresser, and she said that she absolutely loves doing hair, and mm-hmm. it's not about the money. Yeah, yeah. It's the connection and the feeling she gets from, changing people's lives by changing their hair. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, you know, when you're in that position of, you know, it's again, you come back to the six human needs. Tony Robbins talks about the highest one and the most spiritual is the need for contribution. Mm -hmm. To contribute to something bigger than yourself. And um, if you're only doing it for your own benefit, I don't think you ever do feel fulfilled. Yeah. When you're doing it for it's neediness, humanity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then, yeah. you know, as I say, time stands still and you never get tired. It, mm-hmm. it's, you just keep going because it, you just, you're, how can I say, you're uplifted in the process. Yeah. You know, they all say this in the giving we receive. Um, but I think that's where the fulfillment comes from is making a, a difference in, in society. Yeah. And otherwise, you're always dependent. I love, uh, First of all, uh, the work from Kevin McCarthy, the on-purpose person, on-purpose business, because he has a, a sentence in there, if you do find your purpose, and purpose really more like we call it essence, not just I yeah. think about something, uh, I serve the world by. Yeah, if it's a really your soul, whatever. and a German professor talks about it's, it's a source. It's like the source just pour, pours out water, not for give me something. It's just what it is. Yeah, just giving. It's a natural thing, and not looking for the saying thank you. If I'm good, do I get approval for whatever? So I'm just being. And in, in this way, we come back to I don't care. 
<laughs> what other people say in the yeah. positive way. Yes. It's doing what you love and not just like this or you know. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, when we can be in that place to absolutely loving what we do, mm-hmm. being detached from the outcome, I think is so important. Yeah, you know, um, I think that's where a lot of people struggle is their attachment to the outcome, and when the outcome doesn't end up being what they had imagined or hoped, then poof, they feel so mm-hmm. deflated. Mm-hmm. But if you, you know, Deepak talks about in the seven spiritual laws of have the intention, then give it your attention, mm-hmm. put it out to the universe to handle the details and detach from the outcome. Mm-hmm. But I think you must have present moment awareness to recognize the magic when it unfolds mm-hmm. and to enjoy it and share yeah. it. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And that's from present awareness. Yeah, well, that's, that's only possible if you're not expecting um, that it works in this way. So if, if you expect UPS to deliver something, you don't open up for DHL. Yeah? So that's why. I've, yeah. Let the universe deliver and just be open. Mm-hmm. And sometimes yeah. they come through the back door. Yeah, be- no. <laughs> yeah, and because it's and it's been able to find the gift in mm-hmm. every situation. Yeah, you know, my wife and I just flew back from France. Uh, we were at three, three lovely weeks in France, and we got to Toronto. Uh, the flight from Paris was late leaving. Of course, we missed our connection from Toronto to Calgary, and. Um, you know, a lot of people were upset with missing the connection, and the, the lady turns and she says, "Well, what we've done is we'll put you up at the the airport hotel for two nights." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Cool, I've never seen Toronto. Now I get to spend a day in Toronto on their dollar." <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was like, "What's a gift in this situation?" Mm-hmm. And I think uh, when we can ask that question, no matter what's going on. Knowing that every event has got a benefit and a drawback, mm-hmm. and if we can ask ourselves, "What's the gift in this?" Yeah, then automatically we're in a better place, and mm-hmm. um, and totally detached from the outcome, and thinking that our way would have been better when the actual fact our way would just have been different, and mm-hmm. we can't know without a doubt that it would have been better. And here's something that comes along and flips it upside down and. Hey, you get to spend two nights, all expenses paid, in Toronto. Cool, <laughs> I'll take that. You know. Yeah. So, again, it's how how are you? As Bob says, you know, when you react, you lose control, and when you act, you maintain control. Mm-hmm. So, you know, who are you being in that moment? Are you being reactive? Or are you being accepting of what is? E. Yeah. Okay, let's make another short break. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Yeah. And someone 2,000 years ago has said, yeah, we should become like children again. And isn't it interesting that children wake up in the morning and they just enjoy everything. They don't plan the day, really. They don't think about the next day, not so much about yesterday. they really capable to enjoy the moment. And, and like the guru said, it's just, oh, the worst thing, what we have is a memory, yeah? <laughs> so that's why we try to get things done instead of just ah, enjoy and be in the moment and, and feel just the joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the way is that. Yeah, oh, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you dropped a lot of wisdom uh, already uh, here and there. Um, but um, if you start the coaching like this or whatever, what? Could be what they step one, step two, step three. Um, oh, if you do this, you make a big step forward to yourself, to your happiness, or 
I think the number one thing is to learn to love what is. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what it is, knowing that, as I said before, every event has got a benefit and a drawback. Mm -hmm. um, and when we can embrace both sides, you know, the pain, the pleasure, the sorrow, the joy, then we can say, bring it on to mm -hmm. life. Right. Um, and again, it's, it sounds it's easier said than done, but really when you're able to do that and embrace the duality and love it for what it is, when you can find the gift in it, then you can say, I look forward to whatever comes my way. Um, and you're not as reactive anymore. But most people are living from a place of fear or guilt. Mm -hmm. You know, the fear is that in the future, either real or imagined, they're going to experience more pain than pleasure, more sorrow than joy, more challenges and support, or more negatives and positives. And the guilt comes from believing uh, or imagined that they caused more pain than pleasure, sorrow, or joy, you know, negatives and positives. And they're both an illusion. You know, when you start to realize that they're always equal. Mm -hmm. When you come from that place, then all the guilt and fear and everything else, so-called negative emotions, drop away. And you realize that all that is left is nothing but love and gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get to learn to love what is exactly the way it is. So when the flight gets delayed and you miss your connecting flight, you get to love being given a, a voucher for two nights in the hotel in, the, in Toronto, you know? And well, this is also just in practice. To, um, to love what is is a little bit looking on the outside, what's happening there, and stop judging it. But isn't it also what's really love to be alive? Yeah, it's, I think it's love to be alive. Don't accept the outside and want to have it different. They start to suffer. They make their life miserable, <laughs> and it right. can't enjoy at that moment to be happy to be alive. Yeah, you know, and I think that's the greatest thing. It is one of the greatest discoveries is to wake up every day and have gratitude for the fact that you woke up. Yeah, you know, but how many people choose to have a bad attitude from the moment they wake up? Mm -hmm. and they blame it on the outside, but they don't realize that they're actually choosing it. Yeah. That everything we say and do, we choose to say and do. You know? yeah. And so can we choose to love what is, even if it's gone against everything that we had planned, knowing that whoever's running the show, I like to say, has got a better computer than you and I. Yeah. You know? And so there are no mistakes, you know, if you think of it that way. So, okay, well, can I love it? Yeah, I think that they don't think about the alternative. If you don't love to live, you, you, know, you don't need to. <laughs> but what, yeah. what, what is the alternative? Be dead. Well, so if I'm alive, I should enjoy to be alive. Yeah. Right. I think, you said that, but they don't think about the alternative. It's the same with successful people. Mm -hmm. You know, and... and um, when you think of something, or why don't you try this, you know, a lot of people will come up with all the reasons why they can't do it. Mm -hmm. But the successful person thinks of why they want to do it. And, okay. And they don't entertain that noise mm -hmm. that gets in the way that prevents them from doing it. Yeah. It just doesn't exist in their, their psyche, it seems. Yes. And that's where I've been. I've been around so many now and watching them. And mm -hmm. when you talk about things, um, the concept just isn't there. Mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that's that's one of the, the big challenges as well is that the programming that's been there and from whom, where did we learn that? Mm -hmm. When did we learn it? You know, and why are we still buying into that story? Yeah. You know, well, as you said, your dad told you, who do you think you are? You'll never amount to anything. You'll end up cleaning the streets. Can you imagine your life would have been like if you'd have bought into his belief system? You know, and so I think this is where people, what kind of advice can I give them is to really investigate the story to make sure that what they're believing is actually true. Yeah. So. 
We were, Sounds like a good story. We, I told you, but was it true? Yes. We are not checking this. Doesn't matter. We listen to news. It, yeah. It's still on. So, what is it? Yeah. Okay. I interrupted you with the first. Uh, what What do you recommend second then? So I love what is, and then it's to find the benefit and the drawback of about everything. You know, really find the benefit and also find the drawback. If it ends up being the way you want it to be, what's the benefit? What's the drawback? And if it ends up not being the way you want it to be, what's the benefit and what's the drawback? Mm -hmm. you see. Because again, we end up running a lopsided perception that there's more drawbacks than benefits. Or in the case of, we spoke about earlier on, celebrity worship, we think there's more benefits than drawbacks. Mm -hmm. But they're both an illusion. And yeah. so when you can mm -hmm. collapse that lopsided perception that you're running, then you're left with nothing but love and gratitude. Yeah. And the third one, I think, is to really become aware of what you perceive to be missing in your life, your voids, because the voids become your highest values. And then make sure that whatever you're, you're trying to achieve in your life, you've aligned it to your hierarchy of values. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not aligned to your values, as soon as a hurdle comes up, and an obstacle comes up in the way, you'll quit. Mm -hmm. But when it's aligned to your values, you'll find a way to keep going. And I think that's what Simon Sinek refers to when he talks about start with why. Mm -hmm. And when you've got a big enough why, the how will take care of itself. And so the voids become your values, but make sure you're, you're creating your your goal setting. If you like, you know, we're into the new year right now, but if you create your goal setting linked to your hierarchy of values, then you've got a greater chance of sticking to it versus, you know, by the third week in January, they've all gone to pot, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's someone else's values. Yeah, see? It's, it's our father's values. It's our society's values. It not be ours. Yeah, and that is some, the, the tricky thing to find out what is really my idea or my goal or who implemented it in my brain or whatever that I should yeah. follow the path. Mm -hmm. Well, they're interesting, and uh, that's why we also are meeting here in South Africa in a week uh, to really create... Uh, the essence program to really, 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 what is the best way to find the true, true self or not, and, and not just the persona we are created, the fake persona we often identify with as and not just what is a true identity and then live from there. And then everything is possible and allowed. <clears throat> and you don't need to sell your soul, then you can have everything. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, really looking forward to this. Yeah, we will tell you, and we will be here on the show again and uh, share what is the best way to really, really do, do, uh, do it. Um, because then that I believe, and that's what, all what we're here talking about, is the extraordinary future. And we're talking about these uh, human <laughs> needs in this way, because this is so important that we really want to have a super, super, extraordinary, super future, we need to heal a little bit more. We need to be capable of and just enjoying life. Yeah. And this, so that is uh, the the main thing as a human. Then we can live different companies and then we create different systems for the whole society. Um, because today, who is running the companies, who is creating all the problems, those humans who have their needy stuff in there and not really um, aligned with their true self. Right. Thank you, Steve, for your wonderful insight. And it just flows out and one da 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 da. That's <laughs> uh, amazing. And uh, uh, I'm happy um, to meet you soon again. And then uh, I promise you, uh, you listen to the show today. We will have him. Uh, a couple of times more and uh, going deeper and deeper in those, uh, yeah, what he all knows and help so many people we all can benefit of. Thank you, Steve, and uh, thank you for listening. This was, uh, uh, again, an another episode of Inspiration Radio, and uh, please, next week we have the next one. Share.
and uh, yeah, have a wonderful life. Be inspired. This was another episode of Winspiration Wisdom and Information to support you getting out of illusions, false identifications, limiting beliefs. We all have the power and potential to be more, do more, have more, give more. Reality is what is possible in the universe and the best is yet to come. If you want to dive deeper into possibilities of creating the extraordinary future, go to inspiration.global or to wolfensonnenburg.com. More information and some free downloads like the email program Dream Goals Reality or a copy of the book The Best is Yet to Come can be found on the UK Health Radio website under the Listen on Demand and Presenters section. Join us again next week on the Winspiration Show for more wisdom and information to create your extraordinary future.